This is Rashid Chappelle, Project City's own. And when you want the real, you checking out Mike Powers Global. We taking it from the hood across the globe. Peace. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Thank you for clicking the video. Welcome to another incredible interview here on the channel. And with that, hit the lights. For my real hip hop heads only. Today's interview may seem otherworldly cause UFO Thieve has now touched down in the galaxy that is the real home of hip hop. I often use the term alien in referring to gifted lyricists and the double entendre serves my next guest splendidly. He delivers on hip hop's eternal promise to keep it real and consistently demonstrates that real is speaking out on behalf of your people. Real is respecting the architects enough to not only honor their blueprint in his words, but to also have been special enough that one of those legends felt compelled to co-sign that thing which has brought him to this moment. Add to that projects with Static Selecta, Terminology, Big Ghost, Styles P, Ransom, Ito, Fat Joe, and the bevy of others, and what you get is a young man swiftly moving into the conversations of must watch and next to blow. I don't know this man personally, but all I've seen tells me that he has not yet begun to scratch the surface of his true brilliance because you were not ready. Reading between the lines would expedite you to a place where I now find myself, which is extremely eager to learn more of the man on the left side of your screen. That undertaking indeed will commence right after I scream wildly into the luckiest microphone on YouTube that the pride of Jefferson Project and East Harlem Springs, voice of the people, ladies and gentlemen, UFO Thieves is in the building. You shot that one from you shot that one from behind the earth. That went in straight net. <laughs> That's how we do it, man. It's a heat check, you heard? Hey, I got chills, man. I got chills. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. No, thank you for 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 gracing us with your presence. You know, your name is is buzzing around right now. I mean, you've been around for a while. People starting to talk about you more and more recently. I have played your song "Danger" on my live incredible song incredible video i think we're gonna talk about that later i want to jump right into it um hip-hop to me has always been a competitive sport uh, a, a ton of rhymes from back in the day um or mcs from back in the day uh was professing that they they were the best is that something that's part of your psychological makeup uh is that something that you want like you see yourself yes as sir driving for the yes. being the best yes sir that's the only thing to be is the best that's why i'll be so hard on you know well, I want the attention from everybody so everybody can know that when we step on that court, it's like when we playing ball, man. Like, we don't care who got next. You want to play against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to play. You see you coming to the park and you seen us, you like, oh, yeah, it's a good day to run today, you heard? Exactly. And that's why I call this a sport because it's competitive. And East Harlem, is that correct? Yes, sir. You nailed it. Okay. East Harlem. Um, Use the right poetry before yes, you sir. became a rapper. How old were you and what were those poems about? Um, I was probably like in the f fifth grade. Um, fifth, I remember they had like a contest, a poetry contest where like the teacher had a box and you could get whatever was in the box. She had like comic books, um, some toys, you know, things like that, good stuff in the box. And I was like, oh, I need, I wanted this comic book she had. Um, I was a collector of comic books and basketball cards, things of that nature. So she had like a, a, a if I'm not mistaken, I remember she had like an X-Men, one of the classic joints in there. And I was like, oh, I need that. And um, I wrote a poem and she, you know, I won the contest mm. and I won the comic book. I got the pick first. And I you took was like, what, nine, book. 10? Yeah, about nine, 10 years old. And I won and um, she was just like, you know, you have a talent writing, you should write. And um, I always like doing um, word tests and, and um, doing, I like writing my my letters and um, when the teacher would have us look words up, I enjoyed that. I always, I didn't look at that as working class. I was like chill time. Like, Let me ask you a question. These, you're doing all this reading, you're doing all this writing. 
you you're, you're a smart guy in school. Um, you enjoy words. How did your classmates take to that? Well, I went to school. Um, well, up until you know, until I started getting in the streets, it was all good. You know, everybody was. You know, we didn't know no better. We were young, young kids just doing with my parents. You know, my dad. I was one. My dad in my neighborhood was like the neighborhood dad. Oh, gotcha. You know, all the kids. Um, like my dad. Um, when he would take me somewhere, he would take a few of the other kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? A few of the kids from my building that, that didn't have fathers and stuff like that. They were always, my pops would wake us up in the morning, make us play ball, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So, um, I mean, it was my always dad was the, sort of, my dad, not to cut you off, my dad was sort of, you know, neighborhood dad as well, you know, coming up. Yeah. You know? So, if, so when I got a whooping, you know, my friends got a whooping, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad would, yeah, like, he would bark on me in front of everybody, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? He would let everybody know what y'all doing is, you know what I'm saying? Um, my dad even opened a neighborhood, a karate school in the neighborhood, and, um, because he seen we would, like, when we started getting to the age when we would get into fights and stuff, he bought, um, he rented a space on top of a, uh, the local deli had, like, a little gambling spot, and when it was for rent, he rented it, and he created a little karate school. So, like, everybody in the neighborhood used to be in there. He would let us throw our birthday parties in there. And, um... Y'all was on some Dragonfly learned... Jones shit down in the... Yeah, man, we learned how to fight, man. We learned how to do the martial arts, because my father's a 10th degree black belt. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? So, um, he, he, he did music as well, but, um... You know, back in them days, they did choreography. My father did um, house music, you know what I'm saying? Dance music. So um, I guess in my father's mentality, the karate gave him the discipline to stay focused in the music industry, something that had him balanced because my father didn't do drugs and nothing like that. So he was like um, kind of like the guy who kept everything in check when the when when the group was moving and he would create the choreography and stuff and they was using the karate school he was training in the like for the set to uh get ready for the shows and stuff like that so it was a big part of my pop's life um in the bronx you know shout out to fast feet fontanez and um all them ogs that was holding it down back then we got a lot in, we have a lot in common bro because yes sir i had to i had to learn karate to keep my father off my ass yeah, I had to learn, man. So I ended up being nice, though, you know what I'm saying? Because we were um, hood kids that like to fight. So my dad would take us to tournaments, and, you know, we'd be breaking things apart, bringing home trophies to the neighborhood, big trophies. And we street kids, you know what I'm saying? Like real street kids. And we coming back to the project's hype with trophies that we we earned in karate. And my dad kind of instilled that discipline in a lot of us. Even now, I see some dudes from the neighborhood that are – shout out to Reef Hustle. Reef Hustle was trained by my pops. Shout out to Reef Hustle. Told, yeah, shout out to Reef Hustle, man. And I ain't know that till I bumped into Reef um, not so long ago. He was like, yo, what's up with your pops? I was like, you know my pops, Reef? He was like, yeah, man, your pops trained me, man. One, one I was like, what? He was so like, yeah, you, man. I want to ask you a question about um, high school. Right. Um, you, you was, by that time, you was already spitting. Yes, sir. And who yes, would you sir. say was the best spitter in your high school? Um, who it wasn't you? Um, nah, I, I don't think I was. I think maybe in my high school I was the best. I think the um best person I knew was not in my high school though. He's a kid from my neighborhood, but he was always around me. What's his name? Like he was. Um, his name was Arms. He Let don't rhyme no more. So, in. You, in your high school, you are you sure the best spitter in your high school wasn't Loud Pack Dash? Oh, word. I do I research. forgot about Dash, man. I do research, sir. This is That's a real a show fact. over here. Like, Yo, we was, yeah, yeah, I forgot, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's a fact. I went to school Loud with Dash. Pack Dash. Yeah, man. There was another dude in my school that was dumb nice, too. You make it remember. His name was C4. He was nasty too. I, Listen, it, I didn't go to that school though. I just know people. I be finding just out. Know people. About. Listen, you got a song with my brother G4 Jag too, right? It's not out yet. Is that right? Not a, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, because I talked to G4. And he told me, yo, yo, you about to talk to Fees, and that's the yeah. homie. We got to cut. He said the cut is vicious. 
Who do you talk? Yeah, shout out to Jag, man. He's a great dude, man. Always been humble um, since since we made each other's acquaintance, man. Much respect to Jag. Listen, he's been like that ever since I met him. And then everybody that ever told me anything about him was like, yo, it's a stand-up cat. And he ain't shown me nothing but that ever since I known him. Um, you got a song with terminology. Uh, I know you and Term do some work together, but you got a song with uh, terminology called Diamantes, or is it Diamante? No, yeah, that, yeah, you gotta have the S is Diamante Diamonds. Yeah. Okay, Diamantes. And um, you said in that song, my homies shooting homies, they, they, they want to advise me of something. The notification just popped up on my But they said, um, you said, my homies shooting homies didn't ask you to pick a side. My homies shooting homies then ask you to pick a side. Um, that's what I mean about bars, right? They go mad deep. Um, for you guys out there that I'll be giving feedback to, that's what I mean when I say go deep on the bars. Um, that line, how close is that line to reality? Nah, it's real facts. That's 100%, man. True story. It's, uh, or can we talk about yeah. some of that without really dropping names? Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's just, um, you know, some bang outs happened and they caught on film. It's, um, uh, you know, when you from... You see, when you're from the projects, man, it's like uh, you always know the shooter and the victim. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're really from the neighborhood, if you're really from here, when things happen here, we both we know both sides. You know, you got some people like, yo, man, that's fucked up. You know, some people telling. You know what I'm saying? Some people who not cool with that. Other people you see come out the woodworks that, you know, that's riding with the homie that did it. Like, yo, fuck you up. You know, it is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm a civilian. So listen, when I make that choice, the choice is I'm riding with the guy who demonstrated that he is willing to shoot. That's who I'm, I'm just playing. You feel me? Nah, I mean, yo, Mike, it is what it is, good brother. You know, this is, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, when I rap, man, I don't try to, uh, glorify the streets i try to just tell you that you know the truth don't come in any shade of color it just is what it is well you take right it for what it is you take me right into my next question how are you able to keep your bar so introspective uh in detail but there are so many people out here just um like poking their chest out and, and going surface level with the rhymes even if the punches is hard we're not really getting to learn about that person right and that's right. different with you because you kind of express like we get to find out what you're thinking about, what's on your mind, things that are important to you. And not only that, while you express it to us, those things that are important to you, you do it in a detail that puts us inside the movie. How are you able to do that? Um, thank you so much for your kind words. I'm basically just, I try to, um, like we just said, I try to say as much as I could without telling on anybody. Mm hmm yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I also try to give it to you from the perspective of, um, like I said, an honest point as a civilian sometimes, sometimes a person who's active, who is activated in, in, in different kind of things mm -hmm. and um, a family man overall because yes. we hit an age where we survive it all and now I got kids. So I'm like, you know, my younger cousins talk to me like, I, you know, they think they doing things we ain't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, a younger cousin will be like, yo, I just made 9,000 last week. Uh, and I'll be like, word, that's crazy. He'll be like, you don't know about that. I'll be like, oh, come on, what you think? Because, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm chilling now. We paved we, we pave the way so that you could still do that. That's what a you walk mean. so you could fly, you know what I'm oh, saying? No. So it's like, just because we ain't get caught don't mean we wasn't at the scene, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so man, just like, because motherfuckers is them done backed up off of that and left it to the youngins does not mean that, you know what I mean? Cats can't still get that work when it's necessary. You know what I mean? We That's don't know all the right plays, all the right people. And, to I grew, and I grew up in a time where the, I think the term came into prominence, old man strength. Um, and so old man strength for people who was a little bit young and don't know what the fuck that is. You might be 21 or 22 watching this right now saying, what the fuck is old man strength? These niggas, why? Old man strength is this. You walk up on that, you a young dude. You're 21, 22, you walk up on that old dude, you think some shit about to fucking pop, you about to get the best of this nigga, he put hands on you, you realize he's stronger than what you thought this nigga was. You know what I mean? And then he started really doing damage. You know what I mean? And the old man, you know what the old man strength is? It's that nigga been through wars. He been through shit. He done took some L's. He know what it is. He don't want to get put in that situation again. When he putting his hands on you, he not playing. He looking to finish the fight. That's old man strength. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like an old man, my dad. 
you just hit it on the head. You yo, as you saying it, you replaying me a many times. I see my uncle slap fire out of niggas. I see older dudes just end situations fast. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, yeah. we ain't even like you got mad experience with this shit. I did something <laughs> on World Star like the other day. An old dude went up with with the with the straight left to the face. A young big ass dude. He just went with the straight left. Dude fell fucked down. Old man strip. I mean, yo, dude, Mike, I, I, I've seen my uncle knock dudes out in the club, and nobody even know a fight was going. It's like the club kept going. Like yeah. everybody's still partying. So keep fucking with old niggas if you want to. I'm an old nigga. So and I got a <laughs> I got a rant written. I just haven't recorded it yet. But the rant was gonna be called "I whip one of you young niggas." Ass. <laughs> Talk this shit, Mike. Let them know. Don't know. You hey, gotta remind them. I'm gonna you know write it all up and let these niggas know what it is. I'm not trying to start no beef, but I will whip one of you young niggas. Gotta remind them. Fucking around, nigga. Um, hey, so um, you have a song called George Michael Jackson. So mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of both <laughs> Michael Jackson and George Michael. What is with that title? I'm a fan, I'm a huge fan of both as well. Yeah. And, um, so is the producer, my man Backpack from Tallahassee. Shout out to the young guard. Um, he when he sent me the record, that's what it was called, George Michael Jackson. Yeah. And um, the sample, you know, not to snitch on them, but yeah, it's from one of them. Okay. You know, what I'm I listened to the song. Maybe I didn't catch the sample, but Cats is like really good at like them samples. I I can't. I don't know where it's from. Yeah. So he did a good. The sample song. is from one of them, and um. When is it, I, is, I, it, is, I it is it one is it is it from somebody that has a big family or not big family? Not a big family. Got you. Okay. You feel me? Wow. So let me ask you this. George Michael, what's some of your favorite George Michael songs though? Oh man, yo, I'm gonna tell you how how I came up on George Michaels. Um don't kill me because the titles, you know, I'm more of like come on and I'm rocking. I know yeah. um I was a young dude, my next door neighbor, he used to play nothing but Madonna. George Michaels, all that shit, but he was a good neighbor, like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So his music would be blasting, and I remember crossing the uh, um, little apartment to his crib because he had family and stuff and going and seeing nothing but George Michael, and so that's how I really came up, Um, got to have strength, and you know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean got to have faith? Faith, yeah, yeah got to have so. faith, got to... um. You know, all that good, all that good George Michael, that dang, 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 dang. You know, he gets busy, man. Dang, if you don't know listen. about George Michaels, go tap into the guard, man. He's a, he's a musical boy could, genius, boy could, you know what I'm saying? He could, he just, he got a hell of a, we don't know how good his voice actually is. Like, nasty. He did, a, he did a song with, um, Aretha. He did a song with Aretha. He was on a cut with Aretha. Yeah, like, and, yeah that's and a held fact. On, yo. That's a fact. Nah, he was the man. He was the man in the late 80s, early 90s. And people might have, might, might have thought, like, listen, when I was coming up, George Michael, I wouldn't even let people, I wouldn't even let people know. And I didn't even know that they was, you know, on some homosexual. I didn't know that because I was so young when they came out. It didn't dawn upon me. I'm stupid because I was watching the video for Wake Me Up Before You Go Go and he got on pink short shorts. And but I didn't understand what the hell was going on. So, but <laughs> me, it's me too, Mike. We were so hip hop that when I went outside, I was not letting nobody know that I was listening to the Madonna and and all this kind of stuff. And so people might think, yo, when they when they watch my live show, I might hit one of them. I think this dude, I'm a, bro. Holiday by Madonna, Borderline, Dress You Up. I'll sing the shit right now. I don't give a fuck. I, you get to a point in your life, you get old, you stop giving a fuck. So, um, yeah, and then George Michael had an album called Older. This was after right. like, he blew up. With, I don't know if you ever heard that. Right. It's got right. Fast Love is on there. It's got a lot uh, of girl, um, a lot of, I used to, um, I used to be a bat, you know, I used to be a, a, a hottie on the streets, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of women, also would listen to that music, Mike. Yeah. So like you said, I didn't let people know I would listen to Michael McDonald or, you know, uh, Hall and Notes or George Michaels. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? People didn't know that. But yeah. when I would hang out with women, that's the music I would have on in the car, the Osley Brothers, you know, all that good stuff. I would be listening to all. You got a song with Styles P. Yes, sir. The villains. The yes, cover sir. art is of North Korean leader Kim Jong Il and former President uh, Donald Trump um, shaking hands. It makes sense, uh, being that the title of the song is "Villains." Um, right. But break down the the thinking behind that cover. 
Um, well, when I picked those, when I picked the cover, it was um, the picture initially. It was uh, you know, those are the guys everybody loved to hate the most popular hated people, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the side of the fence you stand on, everybody's going to got something to say about them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most people don't really get past. Um, I think to judge someone is says more about you than it does that person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you can never understand um, someone until you sit in those shoes or you understand what their goals and objectives are. Then you you have the right to understand where they're going. So as a civilian, when I speak, when I think of politics and stuff, I'm pretty much watching the show. I have my own opinions. I form them based on studies, on things I actually go on for years, actual uh, uh, actions that these people say they're going to do or what they're not going to do or what's going on. So I'm not a guy who's going to tell you, uh, I hate Obama because I... I know about Pizzagate, you know what I'm saying? Or that's not why I have my problems with Obama, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, my problems with Trump don't come from him throwing paper towels in Puerto Rico. It's more than that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you, you, the cover what pretty much. Does that even, that that moment in time, does that say something about uh somebody who is either fit or not fit to serve and how he looks at the people that he was elected to serve. Yeah. I don't think he was, um, obviously he's not fit to serve. He doesn't have any experience. Right. So, um, he was never in the military. Mm -hmm. So he has no kind of background in any kind of, um, uh, leadership capabilities as far as governing concerns. Um, so let's get to this. Think because I don't want to get you too far into politics, but I do. We, we do have to put this on the record because when we when we bring this up, because people on different sides of the fence, they try to steal a, a whole election. That did happen. It has admitted on tape that he will grab women by the private parts without asking. That's a fact. He said that out of his own mouth. He also said that he would go into dressing rooms of the Miss Teen USA pageant in order to catch. Um, various teen women or young girls in this state of undress that's on howard stern that's still on tape it's on the internet so i know some people they on different sides of the fence all those things i just said is facts if that's a guy that people say yo i'm gonna cast my ballot for that guy then okay whatever but those are facts are the facts right yeah. that's stuff you gotta live with so yeah basically to answer your question man that's pretty much why i put them there because in the scope uh, of reality, you have to pick a you know side. My whole thing is when people want to talk about it, they say, yo, this Trump, that, yada, yada, yada. I say, come on my show, let's talk about it. None of y'all motherfuckers will. Not one yeah. of you motherfuckers that come in my comment section and say something about what's going on, have the balls to show up, sit in front of this fucking camera, have a conversation with me. Listen, you might see this now. You might feel like, oh, nigga, but you Trump, Trump, you a bitch. If you're not, come talk to me right now about this shit. Don't leave a comment and I'll answer you. You run away. Let's talk about it on camera. You believe in the shit so much, but not one of you motherfuckers will show up. I'm on a fucking rant. Listen, I played the song Danger on my show. The video is different. Y'all actually get a real game of paintball in while y'all was shooting that video? Absolutely, brother. We drove almost two hours away to Skirmish, Pennsylvania. Skirmish. You know what I'm saying? We were 17 deep and... You know, we got it on. Like, how's your girl, aim? How is your aim, bro? Oh, my shit is up. I, you know, my yo, I ain't gonna lie. It was a few. It tested it. Yo, man, I. If you ain't never been paintballing, go paintball. I never especially did. Especially after, especially after being quarantined and being stressed, you gonna really. It's gonna show you. You, you, you. You know what I'm saying? It's really lit like that, though, for real. Them joints fly a hundred. Well, we were told when, you know, they walk you in and they make you sign your waivers and your safety and everybody, they let you know, please keep your mask on. Do not lift your mask up. Because that's it, your eyeballs. Paintballs are flying at 150 miles per hour. Easily lose an eyeball. You know what I'm saying? Them joints are flying at 150 yeah. miles per hour. Yeah. Try to keep your mask down. Like, it was making sure they let you know, like, yo, keep your mask down you know what i'm saying so um yeah man we got the first game they gave us um you know the dude uh the owner of the joint seen us clocking in he pulled me to the side he was like yo something about you man uh, we you know i um 
you know, exchange kind words with him. He was like, yo, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get y'all your own, you know, y'all going to play by yourselves, you know, because usually if you don't have more than 20, then you usually have to make up 20 with yeah. strangers, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he was like, yo, you know, we exchanged for, you know, the good Lord with us. He put us in the situation. He was like, yo, I like you, man. I'm going to give y'all, um, I'm going to give y'all this kid. He gave us a young kid. Mm. You know, he was I'm yo, Daniel, you, you gonna run with them? And he was like, I'm gonna give y'all your own feel, whatever y'all want. Yeah, y'all a shooter? You know? Yeah, like he was like he gave us a young kid that guides you around because everybody gets like a guy that takes because you gotta walk into the woods to your fields. What kind stuff, of guns? You know? Like what was what was what was your get? Yo, oof, I rented um you could get the free joint mm -hmm. and then you could upgrade your joints. I had a few homies in the crew that have been a few times. They had the, they had their own. My cousin got some joint that sounds like you shooting some shit. Like, yo, we was playing and he shot that shit the first time because they tell you not to put it on rapid fire to shoot automatic. Yeah. But we by ourselves so we could do whatever we want. So my cousin had his shit on rapid fire. That shit is going because you could stuff your shit full of paintballs. You feel me, Mike? Until, you know, they's like, you got this bit. Cats walking around with hold, with ammo strapped. With hold, you got to go buy either. You could buy, I went and bought a vest that, like, you know, like on some Call of Duty shit. As yeah. you can see in the video, I got the camo vest. You buy um a box of paintballs is a, is a thousand paintballs, Mike. So you buy a box, it's like $100. It comes with a thousand paintballs. And from there, you just filling up your, your clips like full of paintballs your extra clips your, your, you know what i'm saying and you have a mac 10 can... it looked like you had a little yo i had some shit that i had a joint that wasn't like high grade but it was kind of it wasn't low grade so my shit was hitting my my joint wasn't getting jammed up like I, a few of the homies had the free joints and they were like yo this shit is it you know what i'm saying and then my the the, the, the homies that had the the, the pay for joints their own them shits was hitting like you were at some point signed to Fat Joe. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Absolutely. And you and you, that's not the situation now, but you still cool with Joe. And that's you, my brother. You still rep Terror Squad to the dirt. Like that's yes, correct. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And um, being around like Terror Squad and things like that. Have you ever had a uh, the occasion to speak to? Terror Squad members, either past or present, that had any misgivings about Joe? Because I know, like, it was a couple guys that had a couple things to say about Joe, you know, I want to say over 10 years ago, and they had some problems. Did those guys try to reach out to you or talk to you or try to put stuff in your ear when that situation first happened when you met Joe? Um, What's funny is, I right, outside of, like, consider, uh, when we speak about Remy, Tony, Sunshine, yeah, like, um, them... They were cool with Joe when I got to Joe. Like so Remy um, is cool. They've been back. Cool. Yeah, so Remy, you know, Remy and back cool tone also, you know, was going through some personal stuff um that I'm not too familiar with. But mm -hmm. when I got around them in 2016, Tone was also just coming back from what he was battling with. Okay. So he was uh, you know, messing around with Joe. I would see him here and there. You know, Joe was inviting him to certain places and um what I was getting was that he was coming back from battling some personal issues. Um, outside of, um, also, we just did a show before COVID. We performed for the loud 30th anniversary with Wu Tang and everybody. And Joe had the whole terror squad with him. They Word up. Fun. I like to hear that. I like they did an homage to Pun. So everybody was there Prospect, Armageddon, all of them was there. Um, now, obviously, when we speak about the other member, you know who I'm talking about, the one who's always had an angst with Joe. Um, Am I allowed to say that name or should I not say the name? Um, I don't want to give him, I don't want, okay. you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Everybody know who we talking about. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. Um, it's not my business, so I don't want to promote it as if it's my business. But he does, he did follow me mm -hmm. on um, Instagram and a few of his people do show me love on mm -hmm. my music. You know what I'm saying? So, um, what I can tell you is from Joe's mouth was that stuff that has nothing to do with me, you know, cause there was a time where, um, I'll give you this. There was a time I performed at YouTube with, uh, pun son, Chris, Christopher Reeves. Yeah. So, um, it was who I'm me, hearing Chris, it, who I'm, great spitter. Okay. No, nah, he's awesome. So it was me, Chris and Oswin Benjamin. And, um, I have a really good relationship with Oswin. 
and Oswin and Chris are, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, them and Annoyed have a rap group together. If I'm not mistaken, oh, big so noise. They, no, um, Annoyed from Connecticut. Oh, got you. Okay, uh, MC, Annoyed, A N O Y D. Um, got you. They were performing as well. The trio, they were there. So, um, you know, I I'm really cool with Oz when I took a picture with the the gentleman, you know what I'm saying? With yeah. Pun's son, with Chris and Oswin. And, um, you know, when I spoke to Joe and I let him know, Joe just let me know, um, just like, you know, it's stuff that don't have nothing to do with you. It's just best if you stood out of it. Mm. So it don't look like you, you know what I'm saying? So I've always kept it as that. Um, me and Remy have a great relationship. Me and Tone have a great relationship. The other dudes in TS show me, um, you know, like those are my brothers. And um, like I said, the other side, they also follow me and they also show me love. So I just keep it like, yo, I show Shout everybody Squad. Love. We hope everybody can come back together, have some conversations and work everything out. You know, you know, um, you know in, our, in our own private time, I think sometimes we reflect and, you know, we, we get mad at certain people that we had love uh, for for such a long time. We turn our back on them and say, you know what, never again. It, I think it's always, uh, as long as we still got breath in our lungs, it, it, it's time for reconciliation to happen. That can happen. Um, right before you got hooked up with Pat Joe, is it true that... You were just about to hang up the microphone? Yeah, man. I was um uh I was just considering not being into it because I was investing more than I was I was in the red. You know what I'm saying? I was investing more than I was returning on my investment. Yeah. yeah. And um a lot of time I spent as an artist, I never really spent a lot of time as a businessman. Mm. It was always a hustler. Yeah. You know, um a lot of us say we hustlers, but it's a difference to be a businessman. You know, a businessman wakes up earlier than a hustler, hmm. you know, and he has a lot more to tend to than a hustler. A hustler's only going when they phone ring. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. A businessman is operating on all cylinders. And um, I didn't differentiate the difference. So um, a lot of my time was just spent, you know, um, trying to make the best music and not really make return on the music. Mm. And at this point in time, I was just having a child. It was like 2014. And, um, you know, I, a lot of my homies, I also was getting FOMO. You know, a lot of my homies were buying cars and balling out and going out and um, jewelry and new Jordans and nice clothes. And I was just paying bills and going to the studio, paying bills, going to the studio, yeah. or probably have enough money this month to buy some sneakers and then go to the studio. And most of the dudes that had all that stuff that you was talking about, most of them don't have those things anymore. No, sir. They go Absolutely away. They, they, not. Those things go away quick. That's a fact. So, um, you know, I got lost in that, my friend, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, and I ended up, if it wasn't for, uh, shout out to Puff, man. If it wasn't for Puff, having a conversation with me. Then and I you got ahead of me. I was about to ask you, Diddy called you. That, this is a headline right now. Diddy rings you, your phone rings, you pick it up, it's Diddy. Am I right? Right. Talk to me about this. Um, it's actually, um, I was on my way to, I was, I was living in Queens, Flushing. I was in, um, I had a Honda Accord, and my, it was me, my wife now, and um, my daughter in the backseat, we were going to Jamaica Avenue to buy chicken pat beef patties, bro. And um, at the Coliseum, Colise at the Collie Block. And um, I had been in touch with someone who said they worked at Bad Boy. Um, like a week before that, had got my tape. And he was like, yo, I work for Puff. So I was like, oh, that's what's up. You know, I really didn't right. buy too much into it. And um, he was like, yo, you really dope, man. You know, he was just overselling it he was like yo i work but he didn't have an avi it was the bad boy logo mm. so like really his page like... yeah i'm like it's his page said his name he he had like you know locked this stuff and but his picture was just a it was a cassette tape with the bad boy logo on it like a 94 cassette of biggie or son mm -hmm. bad boy logo so i'm like um you know whatever and um i spoke to him i took his call he was like yo um you got a situation? And I'm like, nah, just... Who we talking about? Just, like, this is Diddy now. Nah, this is the dude. Like, when okay. he first hit me up, you know, when he speaks to me, he's like, yo, you got a situation? He told me that Puff had heard the music already. In the in the first conversation, he was like, yo, I was listening to your mixtape, your project, and Puff walked into the studio. 
Like, and um, like he asked, who's that? Like, yeah, who's that? He made me bring the record back and he asked me, who's that? He still, he listened to the record. So he was like, yo, I don't really, I'm not supposed to be telling you that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna let you know so you know I'm official. So I was like, all right, but I still ain't really like. Right. And um, so he never called my phone, never text me. We spoke on Instagram. So I put my number in the Instagram, like, yo, here's, you know, whatever. My phone rings the next week. Um, I was going through my uncle had just passed away, maybe like two weeks prior. So I was depressed. I was not wanting to do nothing. And um, my phone ring, man, it's a number I don't recognize. And um, the dude, he's like, yo, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, yo, Fee, what's up? I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, you free? He's like, this ride, you good? You free? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, the big homie want to speak to you. So I'm like, but before I get to speak to him, like Puff already took the phone. Like they must have, like how yeah. I imagine it in my head, they sitting together like in the car or wherever they are. And Puff was like, yo, call him. Because before he even said anything, Puff was on the phone like, yo, Playboy. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like Puff, he really said Playboy. Oh, like, he was like, yo, Playboy, what's up? I was you recognize like, the oh. voice. Yeah, man. Like one of the moments in your head, like, oh, uh, God, God. God slows down time for you significantly for you to have a moment to know that you're about to be on the phone with somebody or be in this moment with somebody and then it's presented and you actually hear them. That feeling will blow your mind like, oh. He said the feeling that blow your mind, we're going to hold that comment for right there. Let me say this. People often talk about, he's right for jokes. People make all kinds of jokes about Puff. Fine, it's fair game. He knows this. He's a good sport. His impact on music and hip hop cannot be underestimated. Like, come on, okay. The guy was going from Howard University, coming up to intern at Uptown, doing his thing. He he had the vision. He was the guy that put the whole Mary J. Blige look together, the Jodeci look together. He brought uh, Biggie to the table doing street rhymes over R and B beats. Some that was not that didn't exist. And people we got comfortable with it in the mid nineties and all the shiny suit shit. But before he did that, we, nobody had unlocked that, and that meant so much for uh, hip hop's growth expansion. You know what I mean? So you got to give props to Puff. Um, and so for people that sitting there thinking, why are they tripping? Because it's but because motherfuckers that know no. I want you to go ahead and continue though. Nah, you couldn't have said it better, Mike. Well worded. I mean, f for the for the uh. For the person watching this, like you said, who's wondering why it's such a big deal to us. Well, for me personally, um, first and foremost, man, I'm from Jefferson Projects. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a Spanish kid. Grandmother raised me. My mom smoked crack, sold crack. My pops was a musician. He was on the road. When that gave up, he started selling drugs. Got caught up in some big time shit. Um, I ain't have nothing growing up. You know what I'm saying? I never had it wasn't no layups for me. Everything was a double team, break through the defense, get the bucket, and one. You know what I'm saying? It was earned. It was deserved. So um, I also seen what Puff did for Black Rob firsthand. I also seen what he did for G-Death firsthand, changed their lives, took them out the projects. Not only did he did do that for them, but for me being there at the time in the projects, like you got behind you, Mike, living on the seventh floor, it changed my whole hood. My whole hood just changed once we had somebody that was from the hood that was doing it, seeing them on TV, woes popping. So, and I happen to know me, you solid. I happen to know your name is solid as hell in Jefferson Projects. Whether that whether right. that's important or not, the people that I was talking to told me, "Yo, that's why I said in the intro the pride of Jefferson Projects because I'm hearing that you're very well respected there." So, we did. Yeah, we was there. We was there from the bottom. From from. You know, I was born in Spanish Harlem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Mount Sinai Hospital. Um, my father and my mom's is from there. It was really, you know, if I lived anywhere else, little, you know, my pops doing this hustling thing, moving around, or my mom's getting kicked out the projects, that kind of stuff. I was always in project. I was always in East Harlem. Wherever I was at, I would get in trouble up there to find my way back to my grandmoms because that was my pride. You know what I'm saying? Um, my moms gave me to my grandmoms when I was three years old so she could go do her thing. So even if my dad decided to be like a dad this year and be like, yo, you coming to live with me, we going to live over here. I would go with him 
and I will act out for him to send me back to my grandmoms, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because my grandmoms would be fighting to get me back, and he'd be like, nah, he don't, you know, he let him live here, he going to school, you know what I'm saying? I know he going to school, and I would just be tight because my grandma was old lady, she was by herself in the projects, so I would act, you know, my pops had me up school, upstate, Mike, I would, I would hang out with the, the goth kids, like I was in, wow. I was a project kid just to not be in class, Mike. Right. Just so that you know, what I'm saying that I was behind the school with the golf kids. They were smoking cigarettes. Yeah. I would be on the basketball court just shooting around. Back there smoking cigarettes, wearing the fucking long black, the big duster. long black jack, the Jinko jeans. They listening the, to they listen to the Cure and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yo, and all Depeche that Mode, Everlast, and New Order. You know, what all that like their hip hop was like Everlast and yeah, you know yeah. that right? and I'm sitting there back with them like just shooting around not even going to class like I ain't even care I was just like yo I don't, like these ain't my I don't care what crowd I'm in I just don't want to be here. but this is this is like, part of the thing that shapes who you are as a person like you you didn't want to be in, involved with the shit so you end up with these guys the, the outcast motherfuckers but some of them dudes you found a human connection with. It's impossible not to. They I mean, loved. They loved. It. They loved hanging out with the kid. What they was like, yo, he's from New York. You know, I would wear my hat. You know, I would wear the Yankee. I would dress. You know, like a project kid. They loved that shit. Y'all exchanging cultures, it. bro. What they loved it. They used to be like, yo, tell us about. You know, oh, I remember when Big L died. They were asking me about Big L. Like Big L was from 135th. I'm from East Side of Harlem. He's from the West Side. They was asking me it just to like. And I was telling them like I knew. I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you're a guy from that world that they could not touch at all. You know what I mean? I didn't even know too much. They knew more about Big L than I did, bro. And, and they was like, yo, and they was dying to hear it from me. They just wanted to hear it from the And did you learn about like Depeche Mode and that type of music? Learned about all the um, Depeche Mode. What's, um, what's your man? Smack your bitch up. Uh, oh, um, Prodigy. Prodigy. Um, I almost um, played Firestarter last week on the show and I got Firestarter, scared. Marilyn Manson, yeah. um, all that. They loved all that, bro. Limp Biscuit, yeah. Corn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? System um, of a Down, no, that type shit. No doubt. System of a Down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nirvana. Yeah. You know, now, you know listen, what I'm saying? Nirvana. I'm, I'm probably top 10, top 10 of one what? of the biggest fans, bro. Yo, like, what? I, I, yo, what, man? Kirk Cobain, I bow down to him. Jim come on. Carl, you know what I'm saying? Yo. They be no, no, none of this shit without them. That Dude, when that's I woke up on. and I found that he was dead on MTV, I was devastated. I mean, I can't listen. Aaliyah is my heart, and I, but I had the same feeling when Aaliyah died that I had when Kurt died. It was just, it was a problem for me because I just felt like, you know what I mean? Like if you don't understand it, and at the very beginning I didn't understand it because I was just here. I would listen. Um, smells like Teen Spirit. And I would hear him go, nah, nah, nah. and I know the lyrics, so I'm just mumbling, but nah, nah, nah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, yeah. But then I would like, I really peeped like the visuals and what he was trying to talk about and the way he was doing it. And you hear the pain. Like, listen, when you listen to, um, I think the name of the album is Smells Like Teen Spirit. I, I might be forgetting what the name of the album is, but that album that's got Smells Like Teen Spirit and, and all those joints on it, you hear him expressing the pain that he's going through in his life. Um, and um, on on a whole bunch of different levels, different ways, you do that, right? You talk about sometimes it'll be a, a beat will come on, and it'll sound like something that a motherfucker's supposed to do something real dirty, grimy street on, and your aesthetic is street, but then the subject matter might be something that's not. It might be something mad educational where you drop in gems, and so. I, in, in that way, you express who you are as a person through different layers, right? You'll take this beat and express, you know, this part of your personality over here and do a whole different thing over here, but there's always layers to the thing. I don't want to get too far off the track. Uh, Black Rob, you, 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 you cool with Black Rob, and he gave you your name? Yeah, 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 he gave, me, he gave me my namesake. He gave me the feed part. He gave you the feed? Um, yeah, he gave me the feed part, well, the feed. UFO. Um, well, I, I grew up with Rob. Rob was like my babysitter, man, at one point. Black like Rob that, was the babysitter. Word to mommy, man. When Rob was robbing people, breaking in cribs and stuff like that. Because he was, um before he was Black Rob, he was Bacardi Rob. He was like the neighborhood. They was two, I. Right. In my projects, there's two halves. There's first half of Jefferson. There's the second half of Jefferson. I'm from the first half of Jefferson. They was... A big time hustler in my that like ran my section, 
So my section was like the popping section, right? This big time hustler is from my building. So my building had the hustler, Black Rob, and my father in it. Now my father was doing this thing as well. He's no slouch, you know what I'm saying? His group in the 90s, they was big time. So you had these three big time guys in each of their own worlds respectively. Rob was starting to rap, my father was in music, yeah. and the other dude who just came home, shout out to him, um, he was running the game, he had it long locked. So my father started taking a liking to Rob as he was beginning to rhyme. He would have Rob around all the time. So Rob would pick me up from school, from elementary school all the way up to like, right to middle school. Rob would be waiting outside the school for me three o'clock to walk me to the crib. So Rob was kind of like my caregiver for a long time, just having conversations with him. You know, he teaching me about stuff, asking me questions. And um, I would see him get into trouble, rob things, you know what I'm saying, in the street hustling. You know, um, he was really good at basketball. Black Rob was well, really, you really, school, really. And he's like, you know what I mean? Finish your homework, like, whoa. Get like in there, clean your, <laughs> up your fucking room, like, whoa. Just like that, right? Yo, he's like, yeah, Mike, you gotta stop, Mike. <laughs> Go and wash your yo, fucking dirty Mike. face, like, whoa. Yo, you gotta stop, Mike. That's exactly, yo, Mike, yo, man, that's Rob, man. Shout out to, uh, so he was Bacardi Rob, man. So Shout um, to Rob. I ended up getting the name was, um, you know, he blew up, he came Rob. So one day he's, I'm walking through, John, I'm in Johnson, I'm going to play basketball in the, um, schoolyard called 57 as i'm walking through the cut to get the 57 rob is walking by himself so he sees me he's like yo mookie what's up because they used to call me mookie mm -hmm. so he um he hugs me you know what i'm saying hug each other whatever he's like yo man he's like, i haven't seen him in a little minute so he's like yo you getting big you know what i'm saying he's going through that whole adult thing like yo yeah. look at you man like yo how's your moms you know what i'm saying he's talking to me and all that yeah and um I'm like, as we finish talking, he's like, I begin to walk up. I'm like, all right, Rob, see you later. He's like, oh, yo. He's like, yo, I heard you rhyming out. Like, he walks back to me. Like, he's like, yo, I heard you rhyming out here, too. So I didn't say nothing, Mike. I, I can remember it vividly. I'm getting chills. As I tell you, I just smirked at him. Like, that was always me. Yeah. Like, my dad would tell you I'm too cool for school. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so when he said it, I was like, he was like, yo, I heard you got a little fever, too, man. Like. And I was like, he was like, yo, whether or not it's you, keep doing your thing, man. Just stay focused. You know what I'm saying? Like, Who named you UFO? Um, I gave myself that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I gave myself that. Because what? You otherworldly? You alien? Um, unidentified flowing object. You know, unidentified um, flowing object. I like it. Yeah, like that's where it. it came from, the Puerto Rican, the way I was rhyming. So you, so know, you talking to Puff on the phone. What happened? Oh, um, yeah, so Puff calls, um, he gets on the phone, he's like, yo, Playboy, what's up? So um, as he says that, Mike, you know, um, I'm, um, you know, I'm raised by my grandma, so I, I praise him before he even finished his next sentence. I was just was like, yo, if this is Puff, um, Lord is, you know, God is great. Thank you very much for this opportunity to call me. Um, I'm getting chills, as you tell you, my, I could cry, man, because yeah, I thought yeah. of my grandma's right away, and I was like, yo, Puff, if this is you, I truly thank you. Um, for this opportunity, you even calling my phone is gonna change my life without you even knowing it. Wow, yes. Yeah. I, that's the first thing I said, bro. I was like, thank you, God. He was like, I like your style, man. Like, he chuckled, he was like, he was like, yo, I like your style, man. He was like, that's what's up. You know, God is always, you know, he start talking this shit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he pre he prayed, he praised the Lord himself. He preached to me to stay positive. I let him know. Um, um, First, before even, after he praised the Lord, he was like, yo, you know I don't get on the phone for nobody, right? I was like, yeah, you ain't even got to tell me. He was like, I only speak to the greats, man. You one of them, bro. When the world figures out about you, when they get to hear you, they going to know what type of time you on, man. You just got to stay focused. Don't let this shit break you because there's a lot of greats that don't get to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, stay focused and I'm going to see you on the other side when you get here and we waiting for you. You know what I'm saying? So I start um, I praise him again because he had just released um, the Money Making Mitch album a few, maybe like almost a few months or something. So, I, you know, I congratulated him on that. 
Um, he had just came out at the bar. I can remember he had just came out at the Barclays with Nas with the long black trenches. When they had the long black minks on and mm-hmm. the Barclays and shit was dragging behind them. Yeah. I, I praised him for that. You know, I was like, yo, I, you know, I talked my shit. I was like, yo, you know, they, they hate to see a nigga on the Barclays with his mink puff. He was like, yo, you know, that, that riled him up. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, you know, you know, you start talking, yeah, start talking this puff shit, man. And he was like, yo, I ain't even think nobody really understood that. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's for the hustlers, though. That's who I want to know. I want them to see me and know that a hustler made it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. they talking that shit. So, um, after that, he was, you know, he um, gave me some information of what was going on at that time. And, um, you know, I was like, yo, thank you. We hung, he passed the phone over. Homie was like, you good? You know, that's the only, my homie took the phone, like, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, man, so much. He was like, all right, we be in touch, bro. He I would have I I passed the fuck out. But, you know, Drew, Dre from Cool and Dre was the one that got you connected with, with Joe, is what my research told right. me. Um, he, you said about being in the studio with Fat Joe. This is you talking. This was big pun at one point. You said about yourself. Um, how big is that when you when you think about it? That the the, the legend like Joe uh, reached out to work with you, and it's the same guy that mentored another legend, Big Pun. How that? What's the way did that feel like? Um, it's amazing. It's an honor, you know, for me, Mike. I'm gonna be honest. Um. I never, you know, um, with all sincerity in my heart, I never thought of reaching out to Joe. Mm. Um, not because of any reason. I just never truly thought of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I missed, totally missed that signal. So yeah. um, when I did get to see him and speak to him and I fought my way to finally get his, his um, admiration, his attention, and I did get to sit there and live in the moments, it was amazing, Mike. I uh, I couldn't I couldn't express it. I couldn't be more grateful to the good Lord to give me just you know that time. I haven't seen him in because of COVID since last July, but us being together like we were, man, is a blessing. Because like I, I could say, I I've sat in the studio with him and seen him do verses and seen him write records and gave my input or we worked on records, and he like, yo, you know, when he did Ray for me, he sent me my verse, he sent me his verse, and we in my studio listening to it like, yo, this is fire, like, we got your crack, you feel mm-hmm. me? Right. And he's calling me like, yo, Phoebe, I think I'm going to send you another verse, I don't know. And I'm like, what? Like, this is fire, you feel me? Yeah. To me, you know, in my head, I'm like, nah, this is good. I take, I'm keeping it. Like, yeah. I ain't trying to wait another month, or two right. months. Like, I'm taking this. Like, right. he like, nah, nah, Phoebe, I think I could do better for you, man. Let me, let me, you know, saying, let me, let me cook something up. So I'm like, damn. And then being in the studio with him and Remy, Papoose, God bless Fred, the Godson, may his soul be eternal peace. They working and I'm sitting there. I'm again. I'm just from the projects. I'm feed. They all. I didn't grow up with these guys. It ain't ten years and better. Yeah. I'm, I'm fresh off the block. You, you know see these saying? guys on music videos. You know, literally. Now you're like, in the you room. feel me? When, when all the way up was I was just a civilian when all the way up came out a hit. Yeah. I'm not down with them. I got down the tail end of that. The way you know the, at that at the wave was already hitting the shore. So I'm there for that. Yeah. I'm not there for the ride of the life and all that shit. So when I come around and I'm just being able to look around, I'm like, damn, this is crazy, bro. Even being with Joe and Jada Kiss and Styles and them talking to me, like they not talking to themselves and 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 I'm I'm on the outside and I'm just absorbing it. Like I'm actually in the conversation with them. Like they're asking me what I think about that or I could have a debate. We're actually having debates about what teams are better. You know, what do we think? You're kicking it. You kicking it with Jada Kiss. And Styles and 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 and, and Eric B. You know what I'm saying? And 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 KRS and everybody that Joe that he brings around that 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 he has on his everyday basis that people don't know he just has these relationships with. And I'm getting to sit there with them and talk to them and they and they 
because my relationship with Joe, as like you said, comes directly from Joe. Mm -hmm. It don't come from Tone that brought me to Joe or Mike that brought me to Joe and Joe liked me. So I got to mostly come around when Mike come around right, and right. try to work. Like my shit comes straight from the source. Like everybody else got to look at me like, why Joe likes this um, kid? The song, the club, it sort of stands out from the more traditional underground boom bap. Uh, it feels like you dipped your toe into the mainstream on that joint, uh, but you also kept it gully. The video looks like somebody spent bread on the joint. Um, talk to me about the thought process behind that record, uh, the club, and what was, and was that your, was that your biggest budget video? Yeah, that's um featuring Spice joint, right? Nightclub. Spice. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yo, don't cut to too. Spice. Don't cut. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Spice, man. She's awesome. She's she beautiful. Worked it. Yeah, that was part of the situation with Joe, man. You know, Joe had a um, few ideas for me. And um, we got out of that situation, we got Rafe and nightclubs. And um, we try to make it look as good as we can for that situation. You know, try to uh, um, spice is not cheap. You know what I'm saying? She is not cheap. Um, if you've never dealt with a female artist, had to pay for a glam squad or a wardrobe, um, some flights. For her and her team, and her she hair. Looked, she looked good. She looked good. She's she's beautiful, Mike. She is oh, don't get we gonna have to that's Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's another conversation, Mike. <laughs> and it's like a hundred people in this video. Y'all got the sets popping off. Yeah, like Mike, you gotta stop, Mike, man. You gonna give me a trouble, Like She was looking amazing, man. You think yeah, you're so... gonna get in trouble? I'm gonna get in trouble too. Like <laughs> <laughs> trust me. Somebody gonna see this and be like, yo, really? Like, nah, listen, she's beautiful. Let's just call it what it is. You gotta especially being a a uh a, a newbie and queen, you know what I'm saying? We gotta give it up for the dark skinned sisters and Absolutely. praise them because they don't get enough love. Not you know only what did saying? she look good, but she murdered her performance on the record and in the video. Dude, she rocked the video like the video was hers. She smelled good too, Mike. You heard her? she was she yo, she smelled good too. Don't she tell me she can thing, cook. Man. Don't tell me she can cook, cause then it's really <laughs> can she cook, then we, we need to talk. Really. I heard she could cook. She said she could cook, Mike. She said she could. But yeah, man, she killed it. So what's the budget um, for that video? As, not as much as you would think. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to go at 45000 Oh, way less. Way less. Way less. Wow, that's good. Dude. We made it work. We made it Did work. Fucking the, there's nothing wrong with stretching a fucking dollar. Jay-Z yeah. said you don't need a million dollar video. You just need a million dollar performance. That's it. So um, shout out to Naj and, um, you know, Itchy House. They worked that out. They made a stretch. You know, Joe is Joe been through tax problems, man. Grown man. You know, we know how to make it work. Live and learn. Live and learn. Yeah, we, we live and learn. I've seen Joe make a record with Cardi and, and well work. You know what I'm saying? On, on, on his own dollar, you got to stretch it. So I've learned I, that as well. Yeah, I saw you did. You did a freestyle on, on Flex about four years ago. Yes, sir. Um. How big of a look was that for you in your mind then? Um, Flex is, you know, I don't have an opinion on Flex, man. He, you know, he is what he is. I've seen him. I've seen the two sides. I've seen the duality. You've you seen the duality. I've, okay. I've seen the duality. You, can you share cameras. with us? Can you share this with us, the duality? I'm a <laughs> journalist. I've seen the cameras. I've seen the cameras off and I've seen the cameras on. What's going on with the cameras off? Can you talk about that? Um, what's going on with you when the cameras off? You not, you know, you put, you put, you conducting yourself in a manner that people it carries over into who you are, who you respect Listen, on camera. I, when the cameras off, I'm I'm in the streets randomly punching teenagers. You know what I mean? Nobody over the age of thirteen, but that's what I. Do. Well, I don't know him to be that, but no, I'm I did. I'm just when playing. I said, I said, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Because I was gonna say something about it. I was gonna say, yo, he does oh he doesn't say, oh man, we gotta stop like too much. Let me stop. Yeah. But, um But is he cool? He's cool behind the scenes. Um he would you know, I've never met him by myself. Yeah. So I'ma take for what I got him from being yeah. around the people I was around. Yeah, he was playing it cool. And then um so when I see him do a lot of the things I see him do, I kinda understand that. You mean like the you mean, you mean like the, the liposuction on live, that type shit? He understands what he's doing. We in a generation where we've grown to learn that these dudes understand what they're doing. He marketing. 
we not from um if you still think like uh if you don't think that uh that little mexican kid from brooklyn that took down the bloods ain't know what he was doing we have to get over that yes you have to wake yes. up we in an era where you got to understand these people know what they doing they manipulating you they're not doing it on their own recognizance of with 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 innocence at heart it's to manipulate you it's to lead you to the water you know what i'm saying and he so, got he got it so he just recently said flex just recently said that um if if he felt like drake had written all of his stuff that drake would be a better he would have Drake hired in Hove. I don't know why my nose is running, but he would have Drake hired in Hove. Um coincidentally he has an album coming out. <laughs> right. So crazy take at the same time when you got an album about to come out. Wild ass take. Like come on now. With the hot, with the hottest artists, he wants to, you know, he's playing the game. Twin, you a DJ, you don't want to be left. You want that Drake record. You want to drop that. You want to be one of the first to, you want to be on his good note. Um, I'm not speaking for him. I don't know. Again, it's not my opinion. I do know that. Come on, man. If you know how to read people, you just read them. Man. Come on. If Hove was around, you know, nobody's saying nothing. If come on, man. But listen, I, I, in terms of New York radio. Cause I was out there um, a few years back and I talked about this. There's a lot of down South stuff going on on hot 97. Um, has New York radio corrected itself in terms of representing more of what New York is really about? No, they're sir. Still, they're not. No, sir. They still following trends. Yes, sir. Wow. Hot 97. They suppose that's why the moniker for this show is the real home of hip hop. Cause I think, Hot 97 calls themselves the home of fucking hip hop. But what are y'all doing over there? And you said no, and that's good. Let me just go here. The Ghost of Abizu. I hope I said that correctly. Yes, sir. The album refers to Puerto Rican revolutionary Pedro Abizu Campos, who was yes, also sir. a politician, attorney, and spokesperson of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party. Um, talk to me about why you chose Pedro to pay homage to and what it's like to have such a historic name associated with your project. Did you feel a, a added sense of responsibility? Yes, sir. I sure did. I also felt his spirit carrying it. You know what I'm saying? I felt the energy of the revolution party of just, of uh, I've, uh, the energy of the good Lord when you pushing positive. It don't matter where it's coming from. It's going, when you push in a message that they want you to spread, their ancestors carry it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I've never met anybody in, in Don Pedro's family. The idea came from um, a comment on Instagram. Someone tagged me in Ghost and was like, yo, y'all should do a joint called The Ghost of Albizu. When when Ghost and I both seen it, we were in each other's DM right away. He was like, I'm on it. So um, I never met Big Ghost. I don't know who he is. I just know him from doing awesome projects with the likes dudes like Griselda and um, Crime and all that good stuff. He got some stuff with my boys at Lord Mom too. I think he did some stuff. With yes, them. sir. So yeah, he he got um he got a lot of stuff cooking. So um, I was just also again, man. As much as I'm honored to be around an Eric B or Eric Sermon or anybody else, yeah. a Buck Wild, or I'm honored to to work with the producers and my peers that are killing them too, a V Don, you know what I'm saying? Etho, Static, all these dudes. I'm I'm fans of everybody that's on a big go. So when he was like, yo, I'm gonna send you a pack, um, I got into uh not that I you know what's ill Mike is that the good Lord puts you where you need to be all the time. So I was already on this like uh, digging into my roots trip. Like I told you, we go into the Marley phase, it'd be like three years, you just be on some... Yeah. I was in the midst of some bullshit. I was on my pride, Taino warrior, learning about my ancestry, like on real time. I had just went to Puerto Rico with Static and them. Um, that whole trip, I, it wasn't a music trip for me. I was away from them. You know what I'm saying? I was living on the island. I was my head down. I was going to, I was chilling. I never so, been out um, there to Puerto Rico, but listen, the women. So, listen. Oh, man, it's a beautiful place, man. The people are beautiful. Good mornings. They, 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 it's, it's, you know, because I, I grew up in PR, but my cousins and them um, had a lot of problems. So at a certain point, I couldn't go back. 
So a, a lot of my teenage and 20s, I didn't visit the island. Then the hurricane hit and my aunts and family that were there had to pick up and come over here. So visiting the island, I visited the whole nother side. I went to the west side of the island, the northwest side, which is Aguadilla, Isabella, untouched. It's more like, you know, straight straight island. There's no San Juan as far as like visitors. It's not like resorts and all that. It's just straight like untouched. So I was with the, the real islanders and I came back and then he was like, yeah, we're going to work on this ghost out Bizu joint. I was like, oh, man, this is a problem. And I'm in the zone. Like, you know, I start listening to Bizu speeches and um, and zoning he was, out. He, he's no joke, right? So, um, number one, they, they had a nickname for, the, for this gentleman, and they called him, I want to pronounce it correctly because I'm not a native Spanish speaker, but I want El Maestro. Is that you correct? got it. Yeah, my, yeah. El Maestro. They called him that. And so... That right there, the, the like the maestro, because he's great with the words, right? And so that kind of fits with you perfectly, right? Like that's right, man. Like do you got the, the ghost of El Bizu, you got big ghost on the joint, you got you on the other side repping your people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bringing this name back to the forefront so that people like me and, and other people can like know who this guy was. Like the memory's not that. Look what hip hop does. That's a fact. <laughs> that's what hip hop does, bro. And so. I think that's so important. Do you have any thoughts on Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico specifically uh, trying to get statehood? Um, that would be a – we could go deep into the conversation. I get um, – our history with the U.S. as far as the, port, um, the island of Puerto Rico goes, it goes deeper than uh, – you might even understand in the in, in this conversation, Mike. Yes. You feel me? It'll take us a lot more time to break down why Puerto Rico is treated the way it is and where it roots back to Columbus landing there. Mm -hmm. Like this ain't start with just the US government. This yep. starts with Columbus landing there and people realizing how fruitful and fertile the land is. Once they figured out where is that geographically, it's right there, Mike. It's right in between South America and North America, it never gets, no, it's just that whole 10 little span, 10 miles of out region of land from Jamaica, the Caymans, Puerto Rico, that whole week, that was ravished by slavery. Yeah. So when they figured out how fruitful that land was, they fought for it. Haiti, DR, all that stuff, the history's there. When PR managed to get itself away from the Spanish conquerors, we were only free for a year before the America came and was like, yo, nah, some, nah, this can't, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't be here by yourself. Right. So again, it's a deeper conversation why certain people want statehood, why some don't. Puerto Rico is a very corrupt island, Mike. Mm. Very corrupt politics and PR niggas that sell them, sell, sell their moms for a bag of silver. You know what I'm saying? Mike, it's Mike, bringing uh, Puerto Rico under statehood status, um, do something towards maybe stabilizing the government that's going on there, and maybe help root out some of that corruption. Could that help? Um, this is a great conversation, man. I'm loving the way you're going with it. Might give people the knowledge, understanding that um the government. The people that the, since since President Truman, the people that the U.S. have sent to govern Puerto Rico have always been corrupt mm. from beginning. That's what Campos and them were fighting because it wasn't like we were getting, you know, like a, a good guy to come over here and help. Um, you know, even from the first side, give you this little bit of knowledge. The first senator um, of Puerto Rico was only in his seat for about eight to ten months, Mike. When he got to the island, he realized how fruitful the island was in sugarcane. Mm. The island was producing so much sugarcane. He bought into the sugarcane. He bought 80% of the sugarcane fields of the island. Left Senate. Started a conglomerate of what we now know as Domino Sugar. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So the guy, the so, guy that actually owned Domino's Sugar is is he a native? Puerto was Rican? the senate? No, he was a someone who President Truman. He was on the board of financial. 
He was a gringo. He was on the board of financial advisors for his President Truman. He asked him to come Senate Puerto Rico. He had no experience in any Senate or anything, but he was a businessman. So when he came, he realized uh, the other, some of the, besides the farmers, some of the cane was controlled by the railroad manufacturers. They were buying up the island as well. So he saw that and he put a stop to it and being his, what, his power in Senate. There's actual letters, Mike, that he sent back to President Truman and to Senate telling them niggas, jump on this now because I'm about to blow this shit up in not so many words. Like in congressional words telling them the island is producing so much cane, sugar cane, it's a gold mine now. I've already purchased this shit. I'm about to blow it up. Who got money to spare? Jump on in and ends up becoming Domino, what we now know as the conglomerate of Domino Sugar. And that's see, the first senator Puerto Rico had under American, you know what I'm saying? That's what they so, do. They want to go across, they want to rape all the resources. I, I need to say at some point, you know, the meek will inherit the earth. All the shit that y'all took is going to get, it's, it's, it's coming back. It's just how the world works. It's how the universe works. It's coming back. Um, there was even one, Mike, not to digress. I want to get this one in there too. The next one they put in was a military because after that, the revolutionary people were getting kind of crazy and things were happening. So the president of the United States felt, President Truman felt like they needed someone who could control things. They sent in a military general to be the senator. This ended up being the first time that America ever used a bomb on his own people was on the island of Puerto Rico in uh, Lourdes. It was a. It was supposed to be a a, a nonviolent march, a protest, a peaceful protest of people protesting in front of the senator's house. Because again, he was doing wild shit. They went out there to protest, and while thing, uh, while they were met by police officers and stuff with AKs and all this stuff. And a mass slaughter happened. And while people returned fire, they called in the uh, U.S. Coast Guards and they bombed PR. Yeah, because that's what they do. You know, they did the same thing to Black Wall Street. Bombed, the, bombed the hell out of Black Wall Street. Um, and then, of course, you know, when they engage in these terroristic acts against Black and Brown people, um, it's very easy for them to, to militarize the police force or, or, or put the military in motion to tamp down, you know, people that's just speaking out that might be black, black or brown, but very hesitant, it seemed to me, to use that same sort of military force on January 6th when I believe domestic terrorists tried to storm the Capitol in an effort to overthrow our democracy that we say we hold so dear. I'm doing too much. If y'all think we just hip hop, and you think that our knowledge base is limited and we can't expand and we don't have these type of conversations behind closed doors. Mainstream media, if you ever get this, understand you're dealing with uh, two motherfuckers that's on a whole different level. And it's a lot of our hip hop counterparts, peers, listeners, and enthusiasts who also think on this level, never get this shit twisted. Um, Demigods <coughs> right. is a song featuring Rim, Eddie Kane, Mooch, Ty, Ferris, so much talent. I don't know where to start. I think it says something about your confidence that you would have all those spitters on the same, like very high level spitters all on the same cut and you're not scared to get in there with them. Talk about the idea behind having all those names on one song. Um, well, I started for me with Fresh Air when I created um, Hard Rock with myself, Terminology, Ethan, and Ransom. Hmm. Um, from there, I figured I wanted to have posse cuts on you know every project if i could put together a posse cut um uh which is what villains was you know styles is a posse within himself so i didn't have to add anybody it was nobody else i could add for styles to make it a posse cut but which that's what the idea was always try to get um mcs that i could rap with you know create that vibe again that make you want to have that argument of who had the best verse or who you like styled on it the most, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or he don't have the best verse, but he got the best flow. Or he might've said that one line that stuck out the most out the whole song. I, 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 I live for that. So um, 
Your favorite when, posse cut is what? My favorite posse cut would probably have to be uh, a toss. These, damn. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, okay. I think I'm still the I'm joint still, with Master Pedo and cannabis, like the full joint. That's one of my favorites. Like, but um, my favorite MC of all time is Beanie Siegel. Mm. Shout out to Philly. So, so um, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, okay. I'm still fucking around with the Symphony, and I like Buddy. You know, what I mean Native Tongue shit. Um, the Symphony is a yo. You cra you crazy, Mike? Because I was just. Listening to the symphony, thinking like, "Yo, this is bogged out." Like they, yo, they all snapped on this joint. It's crazy you say that because I really was just listening to that joint, thinking like, "Yo, this is amazing, bro!" Like posse cut of all posse cuts. I mean, you got you got uh, Craig Craig G, Big Daddy Kane. You got Master Ace. Like Psst. these dudes. You got Coogee Rap. Like, are you serious? Um. Listen, let me ask you this question. I know that 50, 50 Cent has, has these back and forth with people online all the time, you know, including Joe. Um, him and Joe, at some point, they were not on good terms for a while. Uh, since it's hip-hop and Joe is your man's, right, um, how close is 50 from catching a lyrical beatdown in the form of a UFO Thief disc record? Oh, I never had no. You crazy? That's the. <laughs> yo, Mike. Yo, you crazy? Yeah. Uh, hey, yo, hey, hey, I'm trying. I'm trying to do a little something with the channel, bro. Yo, yo, Mike. Yo, <laughs> yo, Mike, man. Y'all would not. I think. I think me, the person I am, I probably would never dislike Joe or Fifty. I just can't. But Joe, like, but Fifty talk greasy. Yo, he's a. Yo, but I've hung out with him too, so. Um, I don't rap. play how I don't play how he played though. Right, right. So right, I don't he know. Getting, he started getting into real shit. Like yo, listen. he played like I've been around like for real. Like I don't play like it's one of them things where you ever been around, like I you you ever had them homies that like when they joke nobody else jump in. Yeah. It's just them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's like yo stay out that shit because they gonna say some shit to you and you're not gonna like it. Like. It's like one of them things where 50's like, he's a great dude, awesome energy, man, great guy. But the way he attacks things and the way he, he knows how to piss people off, man, it's just like amazing to see. So I'm, I'm paraphrasing UFO Thief here. 50 is too petty for you to waste your time fucking with this guy. You're too petty, yeah, I can't do it, man. I ain't got the time. Yeah, I ain't got the time. Petty. He gonna keep going. 50 he gonna keep petty. going and I ain't got no time for that shit, man. You got it, you heard? <laughs> right, right. And I'm not about to come find you and do nothing to you. Like, I don't got time. I got bills to pay. Nah, yeah, I got sandwiches got it, to fucking yeah. eat. Like, say what you gonna say, that's man. A, like, that's a fact. You know what I mean? Hey, um, you have a song, and shout to Joe for not falling for the goofy shit too, man. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Hey, you have a song, and he know what's going on. Like he just, he probably sit back, and laugh at this shit. Hey, yeah, I've seen Fifty going in. Um, I'm not going. I'm gonna keep the names out, but Fifty was going at it with someone online close to Joe at one time. Mm -hmm. If you know, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, we were in a restaurant, and that person called Joe, like, "Yo, man, you gotta call this nigga, bro. This nigga, yo." And, you know what I'm saying? Like he not and and Joe called Fifty right away. Fifty was in the hotel room in his robe, laying on his bed. Looking like he's having the time of his life, Mike. Like he looked like he was just on the bed on the phone, you know, while he was dissing this, while he was tearing them up on IG. It looked like he was dressed for that occasion, Mike. Like he's in the hotel room in a robe wow. with nothing to do with it. He had like two phones on the bed with him. Joe called. As soon as Joe called, 50 picked up laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, and Joe's like, yo, man, you gotta stop. And he's like, he tight, huh? He like, he tight, right? <laughs> What's wrong with Fifth, man? Like, look at all the things that you have accomplished. Look at all this money you got. Look at the, I know, I know you've done some good with this money. You know what I mean? I'm not a fan of what was going on with the kid. Not my business, though. But now, listen, you really got time to sit around and and entertain yourself by just trolling niggas on? Like, yo, he's the original troll for real. 50 is like the original fucking troll. 
Um, no, but let me tell you something. It's the same thing with like DJ Khaled, man. You know, you see this big ray of positivity. Yeah. Yo, bro, he watches the, some of the most fucked up shit on the internet, bro. Like, like Khaled will watch people get their fucking head blown off. Like, he watches all kind of things on the internet. Like, there's not really? a video that comes by DJ Khaled that he doesn't watch. Like, he What's the watches. wildest video you saw that you know for a fact that DJ Khaled watched besides somebody getting their head Yo, bro, I, I can't even... I just know for a fact, like, because he's been watching some shit and they've had that conversation where Joe's been like, yo, bro, what, like, yo, what's wrong with you, bro? You got them, like, them grizzly ass snuff joints. Just, yo, shit that you'll be like, dude blows his neighbor's head off. You know what I'm saying? And you like. Because I will see a title like, of a video. I will see a title. And it'll say, dude get, falls on the track, get his legs cut off. I'm not watching it. I can't. So, yo, these niggas are watch because they on the phone, they watching, and they get off their phone, and they a big ball of energy, and they running around, and you like, yo, bro, I would have never thought. This now you know, Inspector that. Deck was just talking the other day about um, I think it was Deck. Don't give me the line. Don't quote me about he went to a party with Method Man, Hollywood, open the door, rituals, big name dudes, Hollywood actors that you everybody would know. He didn't name the name and said, yo, they was in there doing this crazy. Listen, have you you been around some people, bro? Have you been witness to anything that somebody might term as a ritual? Nah, man, not 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 as of yet. I haven't been to anything that's like stood out, man. And what's ill is that um, I'm always got my eyes open. You know what I'm saying, Mike? I'm always like, like you did right now. I'm always looking around, like what's going on. You so know did what I'm saying? He did, did he didn't invite you to the to the rec room then? That's, that's nah, I never I never partied with did he like Fab with like the same. Nah, I never partied. Saying, man. He got rumors and stuff. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Listen, I never man. been to a puff party, nah, man. I never been to a um, uh, I never even been to the Rock Nation brunch, man. You know, every time I'm around, I'm on point, champ. I've seen things, wicked things that, um, you know, just industry stuff. You see people do things and or or people jump out of character, but I've never been privileged to be in any like situation that'll that'll um have me question God. Or, or question where we stand, you know what I'm or saying? What somebody might be expecting you to do, which what, you're not going to yeah, get Yeah, exactly, you know what I'm saying? But I also think I walk in the light of, you know, I walk, my faith is with, with the creator all the time. I'm a, I'm a man of God. I gave myself up a long time ago. So I also think that um, the Lord also shows you what you prepared to see, what you're supposed to see a lot of the times. You got, a song, you got an album called Bible, right? Yes, it's called biblical instructions before leaving ba earth. Ba basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's, that's a, a part of who you are, and it's a part of your music. That's a fact. It's so real that when we shot the cover in um, St. James Cathedral on one tenth, you know what I'm saying? And beautiful, you're not even by the way. Great cover. You're not even you're not even allowed to bring cameras in there. And I tell you, God walks with me all the time. We was able to, you know, um, the lady in the front. Um, you know, my man was like, yo, we're not going to be able to do it, bro. And I'm like, yo, let's just go. It was, I, t I just went with my man. Yo, we're going to go in here. We're just going to check the vibe. Don't even yeah, worry about it. Calm down that energy. That was yeah, yeah, happening. yeah, yeah. We walked in and um, the lady was like, how you doing? I'm like, hey, how you doing? She's like, you ever been here before? I'm like, nah, the, the um, security guard is like, no cameras. I'm like, all right, I understand. So I start talking to the lady again. I'm like, um. I'm like such a beautiful, you know, I'm taught such a beautiful place. I'm keeping it a hundred. And um, then I'm like, yeah, I'm from Spanish Harlem. She's like, oh, you from, uh, my family is from over here. I'm like, yeah, I was just trying to get some photos. She looked at my man. She looked at me. She was like, are you showing videos or photos? I was like, just straight photos. No video. She was like, all right, so why don't you donate to the church, buy a candle, and I'll let you guys go in. I bought two candles, twin. I wrote, I got, I, 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 let me show you. I still got it, Mike. Yes. Hold on, I'm going to show you right now. Okay. This is the candle right here. Look. Word I still up. Got it. I still got it with my grandmom's picture and the dice and the bread, you know, old school style. Word. Gosh, you know what I'm saying? But this is the candle. And look what I wrote on it. To those who get us, to those who helped us get further, we are grateful. Yes. She seen me. She seen me write that. She was like, she was like, you guys, like when she was like, you guys take all the time you need. She was like, don't worry about it. 
I was like, all right. But that's part of you your know philosophy, what I'm saying? right? Because on your IG or Twitter, you said very recently, I think it was on Twitter. I think, yeah, you said uh, that you wanted to give thanks to anybody that helped you in the past, right now, or even in the future, right? Yes, sir. You're very thankful when somebody, re- no matter who it is, big name, small name, you're very thankful. That's how you are. You, you sometimes, they, sometimes they're not even there in the physical, Mike. Yes. So you got to be thankful because sometimes the, it's not even a, it's, they not, they just standing by you. Oh, yes. You, you, and you've been on my radar for a minute. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. And, you know, I want to make sure I direct people to go listen to this album, this crazy album, Ghost of Albizu. You got to listen to this joint. Like, listen, when you want more from hip hop uh, and then you don't go look for and listen to those people that give you more. And you doing yourself and the hip hop community at large a disservice. Go listen to this album because this shit is crazy. It's bars. The man on the left side of your screen, he different. I'm just saying. So, and when you go tap in, it's like every time, every other time. If I'm lying, just tell me in the comment section. Not one nigga. Let us know. Yet. Not one nigga yeah. told me I was a lying yet. This dude right here, he different. Um, he got the goods. He got the catalog. He got the fucking bars. Aside from any co-sign, he don't need them. His music speaks for itself. Go check this album out, UFO Feed. It was my honor to have you on this platform, sir, and I wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you. Your pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much, man. God continue to bless you and all your listeners and supporters, and we're going to take it to the top, man, for real. Absolutely. Thank you. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powers? The, 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 the intro came.